Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of another beautiful Sunday where we can come together to worship you. Father, give us grace to turn away from the things leading us down the wrong path and lead us to your presence and nourish us with your word. Help our thankfulness to overflow so that we can glorify you through caring for others. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Welcome to this morning's service. A very warm welcome to those worshipping with us online too. Today is the Sunday before Lent. We begin with the greeting. The Lord be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And also with you. We say together the prayer for purity found in your blue-coloured order of service. Page 1. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise to sing our opening song, The Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply become. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself it is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve.
Let us go to God in prayer. Please kneel or be seated prayerfully as we spend this time in prayer. Please turn to the first page of your blue colored order of service, section 4 and 5. Let us prepare ourselves to confess our sins in penitent faith and with repentant hearts. Let us spend a moment in silence reflecting on our lives and examining our hearts. We shall now confess our sins by saying together the corporate prayer of confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us now receive the assurance of God's forgiveness upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall continue our prayers with the prayers of intercession, which will be led by Brother Paul Raj. And the intercessory prayer items can be found in your white colored church bulletin on page two. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, as we come to your presence, we want to look up to you. We want to acknowledge your Lordship over us. We look at you, Lord, as our Lord, as our Master, and as our Saviour. And we thank you, Lord, that you have brought us safely to St. John's Church to worship you, to honour you, to praise you, to glorify you to hear your words being spoken to us and to pray and as we partake of the Holy Communion help us to examine ourselves for the past weeks things that we ought not to do that we have done things that we ought to do that we have not done Lord we want to seek your forgiveness Help us, O oh Lord, that we will repent of our ways, our thoughts, the way we often treat you. Lord, you want to acknowledge your greatness in our life. But many a time we have not acknowledged you. Help us, O oh Lord that our focus is not on the church, on the Christianity, but on you, Lord, that we seek you. We seek your righteousness and we seek your blessings on us. 
We thank you, Lord, for your gracious mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessing that you have blessed us. That you have given us a right to call you Abba, our Father. We thank you, Lord, that through your grace, we see your presence in our life. That you have given us a spirit, not of timidity, but a spirit of boldness and self-control. A spirit that draws us closer to you with confidence, with hope. And as we continue in you, we know, Lord, that we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. We pray, Lord, that your presence will be with us all the time as we depart from this church, back to our homes, to our offices. Wherever we go, oh Lord, we pray that your presence will always lead us. Father, we continue to pray for Malaysia. Like all other nations in this world, O oh Lord, we're facing financial hardship due to loss of jobs, loss of income. There are times when there's no avenue to turn to, Lord. There are places where there are some assistance. But a lot of them, Lord, are suffering from lack of financial support. Their needs is far more than what they receive, Lord. Lord, we pray for them. We do not know how and when this pandemic is going to exist or cease to exist. Lord, be merciful to those who call upon your holy name and are faced with hardship. But we know, Lord, from your word that you have said that anyone who believes in you will not be put to shame. We know that you will not allow your children to go hungry. And we pray that those who call upon your holy name will be strengthened. Your faith and hope and confidence is on you, Lord. You are the Lord who have promised 365 promises. Every day a promise where you say, do not fear. We thank you for such words, Lord. We thank you, your words have given us a life. It is not man, it is not man's preaching, but it's your word, O oh Lord, that has strengthened us. And we continue to pray that your word will continue to strengthen us. Father, we also pray for Myanmar, which is facing a political crisis with military crackdown, a seizure of the government against the elected leaders, Lord. We pray for your involvement, for intervention, O oh Lord, that you will restore the elected government back, especially when many governments have taken, taken or they have taken, put such rules and regulations to prevent the export of Burmese product, which again will bring a chain reaction of suffering of the Myanmaris. Lord, we pray for them. We pray especially those who call on to you, Lord. Father, we pray for the Southeast Asia, we pray for Archbishop Malta Jiki, the House of Bishop and the Provincial Synod. 
that they will humble themselves to receive and seek your counsel. That their agenda is your agenda. That your will be done through them. That they will wait on you to receive your calling. So that your people, your church, your ministry will able to glorify your holy name. Father, we continue to pray for St. John's Church as we continue the Vesh Ash Wednesday service on online. Since we are unable to have a proper service, Lord, we pray as for this service that more of us would spend time to remember the love that you poured into our lives by your blood, by your sacrifice. Lord, we continue to pray for this Lent season. It is not the food that we abstain that is of any importance, but rather, Lord, we would seek you humbly. We would re-examine our life. We will look back into our life, the kind of life that we have led. And this will reflect in our life, in our thoughts, in our mind. As we read your word, O oh Lord, help us to spend time to read your word. Not just listen, but read your word and understand your will for us, Lord. We also pray for the online Bible study program, Lord, that more will take part in it, more will benefit from this study of your word, that they could examine their life to the word that you have given us. Lord, we pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially we remember Emily Ong, Hilda Sangi, Ti Underwood, and others, Lord. We pray for them, that we bless them in your name. Father, we also pray for those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary, especially Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Jacob. Lord, we continue to pray for this lovely couple and we bless them in your name. Father, we pray for Gordon Chu, Gary Pyer, Cynthia Thomas, Ethel Victor Benjamin, Oi Ban Kok, Jenny Lam, Elvin Ng, Kim Chow, Anama William, Ruth Robin, Johan Thomas, Melina Howell, Divina Tanabalan, Regina De Costa, Emily Ong, George Tanmaratnam, Esther Devalau, and others who are in need of our prayer. Lord, you know their medical condition. We commit them into your hands, Lord that your will be done, that you will touch them and bless them, that you will be of comfort where they feel lonely and despair. Your presence will come bright and shining into their life. They will reflect on your word that gives life. For you said in the sum that your words Give us a new life in our affliction. Lord, help us when we are down, that your word will rejuvenate us to honor you as our God. Father, once again, we want to thank you for this time. Thank you for the life that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, that you've come down this world so that we could have a new hope, a new life, a new faith, a new strength, a new spirit. As we are reconciled to you and we stretch our hands to you, Lord, and you lead us the way. Father, all this we pray and commit in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Let us continue with the prayer for the week found in your church bulletin, page 2 at the center. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now stand to receive and celebrate God's peace. Please continue to refer to your, <coughs> to your white colored <coughs> church bulletin, page 2, and let us consider God's word to us as we prepare ourselves for the peace. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, it is written, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us demonstrate a sign of peace to one another. We also extend our peace and fellowship to all those following our service online and uh, we want to continue to affirm our life and love and fellowship together as a body of Christ. Please be seated. We shall have some quick announcements and once again I would like to say good morning to all of you. And welcome back to church today. Now, again, this is a special concession made uh, since February 12th to 18th to February 18th, which is this Thursday, for this uh, for the rest of our current MCO period. We will have to wait for the government announcement of. Uh, what is the next period that we would enter into and uh, also wait for the uh, allowance or the guidelines SOP given by the government for the next period that we are entering into. We hope, pray and trust that we would be able to at least continue with 30 member services but it is not yet confirmed and I shall update you in the course of the week and closer to the weekend. And uh, whenever the next service takes place, I hope you will understand that I will offer places to those who were not invited uh, for this morning service in the short time that we had just yesterday. Our Lent service this Wednesday most likely will be an online service. The main reason being that until 18th February, the SOP, the government SOP, is that services must be held, held between 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. And since Wednesday is a working day, it would not be an equal service for the working members to follow the service and it would be a delayed, a delayed telecast of the service if we were to do it in the morning. Hence, most likely it will be an, a simplified online 
Ash Wednesday service at 8 p.m. so that all of us as a church can follow the service together at that given time. Our two Lent disciplines uh, which the church is providing for you and which requires your response are the foot of the cross although the PDF version has been distributed to most of you uh, St. John's has printed some copies for those who prefer the printed version of it it is available at the church entrance desk for three ringgit per copy lanterns are also available at the church entrance desk for you to collect and observe the spiritual discipline of uh, fasting and uh, self-control and uh, certain other uh, reductions that we might choose to make as a spiritual discipline during the season of Lent and then consider uh, making uh, a special offering into the Lent tins which are distributed to you and for use throughout the season of Lent and the collection from the Lentins will, will uh, go towards the mission fund or will be channeled towards the church mission fund which covers our social concerns ministry, our street feeding program and our community service programs of the church. The booklets, the Lent meditation booklets and the Lentins will continue to be available in the church office for those who are not here today for you to drop by and pick up a copy or of the booklet or a tin for yourselves. Even though uh, we are under uh, restrictions for this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, let us continue to keep up with our spiritual lives and our spiritual disciplines as much as possible and as best as possible for the season of Lent. Please take note of uh, all the other information in the church bulletin and whenever we are back into the CMCO period, we shall try to resume our uh, most important or primary church activities and ministries such as the area care group program, uh, the CAS mission and the street feeding mission and so on. Please continue to pray for the development of a new online Bible study program. I am in discussion with uh, Ken and Fred David about the community Bible study series and uh, we hope to work out the physical arrangements to start this Bible study series online beginning with the uh, book of Acts. I will keep you updated when we have worked out the physical arrangements for it. It is now time for us to make our offerings to the Lord. Please turn to the second page of your white colored church bulletin and let us consider God's word to us as we prepare ourselves for the offertory. In Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30, it is written, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Let us consider two aspects of our giving to the Lord, and one is the disciplined and proportionate form of giving uh, through tithes or monthly stewardship or 
pledges and the other the fact that our tithes and offerings are pleasing to the Lord it is holy and it is considered to be as belonging to the Lord so let us do our best in making our tithes and offerings to the Lord and we shall stand to sing the offertory hymn how marvelous how wonderful it will we will follow the video clip of this song through the LCD projector and the overhead screen please stand thank you
second page of your blue colored order of service. And we shall say together the offertory sentence. Section 12. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we keep you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you and praise you for the inspiration and the guidance of your word to us. And we pray that you be pleased to accept these our tithes, offerings and gifts to you, that you would bless it, multiply it, and use it for your greater glory and honor, for the extension of your kingdom here on earth, for the growth of this your church, and for the good of those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We shall now have the ministry of the word, beginning with the responsive psalm reading, led by Brother Elijah Kaur, followed by the scripture reading, led by Sister Susie Phillips. The readings can be followed on pages three and four of your white-colored church bulletin. Thank you. The responsive reading is taken from Psalms 50 verses 1 to 6. Psalms 50 verses 1 to 6. God speaks to the earth. The mighty one God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above. Gather to me these consecrated ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God himself is justice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and it shall be. Amen. Scripture reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. The Transfiguration of Jesus. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led, he, led them up a high mountain where they were alone. There he transfigured before them. His clothes were dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. 
This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your word written in the Holy Scriptures for us. And now we pray that you would bless us with your spoken word. O God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will minister your word into our hearts, our minds, and our lives, and that your Holy Spirit will bless and anoint the lips of this your servant, that I may bring forth your word to all people gathered here this morning, and all those who follow this service online, that together we may be ministered to, edified, and blessed by the ministry of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, when we go through the Gospel readings, uh, many of the passages are familiar to us. But let us see how God ministers his message to us this morning as we look at this familiar passage on the glory of the transfiguration sorry, on the transfiguration of Jesus on top of the mountain. We need to notice that this passage comes immediately after the passage in which Jesus reveals himself as the Son of God and the Savior of the world openly for the first time to his disciples and where for the first time the disciples led by Peter acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God. And then Jesus proceeds to speak about his death, his forthcoming death and resurrection before he is glorified. And Peter reacts badly to that message rebuking Jesus uh, for saying that and uh, in fact almost instructing Jesus that he cannot say something like that and then Jesus continues to speak about his death and resurrection a second time towards the end of uh, chapter 8 and then we come to today's passage where Jesus takes Peter, James, and John to the mountain top, and there he is transfigured. So, the first message of the transfiguration of Jesus, particularly for the disciples and also for all of us who believe in Christ and in his work, is that Jesus accompanies his words with action. Jesus provides real life and eyewitness evidence of what he had taught and what he had proclaimed and what he had prophesied about his life and his work and the future. That he is the Son of God and he will be the savior of the world through his death and resurrection. Secondly, it is also a confirmation. The second reason for this to take place at this point in Mark's gospel in chapter 9 is to confirm and to give a glimpse of the future glory of Jesus, that his death was not a death of destruction, was not 
a permanent death, but his death was a gateway to a greater event that would take place, and that is his resurrection, and finally, his ascension into heaven to sit on the right hand of God the Father in all his true glory and splendor. And this took place as a miraculous event and a supernatural event on the mountaintop for Peter, James and John to witness for themselves and to experience what the glory of Jesus actually was over and above his remarkable life full of uh, wise and profound teachings and full of miracles. Secondly, we see that witnessing the glory of Jesus firsthand was an unbelievable experience for the disciples. A bright, it was a bright and dazzling experience for the disciples, sorry, for the disciples of Jesus. It was an unbelievable and supernatural experience for the disciples of Jesus, where Jesus transformed into a bright light and uh, uh, sorry into bright white clothes and into a bright and dazzling light which would have certainly overwhelmed the the disciples and that was a glimpse of the true glory of jesus and the power that Jesus carried with him which was yet to be demonstrated in full and which is now in operation with Jesus having ascended into heaven and sitting on the right hand of the Father and is what we shall experience firsthand as eyewitnesses when we meet with Jesus Christ at his second coming and in the eternal kingdom of God. What else do we see about the glory of Jesus on the mountaintop? Moses and Elijah appear to stand by the side of Jesus. And what is the significance of this? Moses can be considered to represent the Pentateuch or the first five books of the Old Testament or the law. And Elijah can be considered to represent the word of God that came through all the prophets and was recorded in the Old Testament. And hence, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah, it was a declaration, a revelation, and a confirmation that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament and of God's plan of salvation. Meaning, Jesus is the Messiah that the law and the prophets that the Old Testament spoke about and pointed to for the people of God to look forward to. Now, although this was a miraculous, supernatural, one-off experience for the disciples on the mountaintop, but this is also an indication and a glimpse of what the glory of Jesus means for all believers and for all disciples and for us as a Christian people. The glory of Jesus 
is alive. The glory of Jesus is at work. And we, as the people of God, through our faith in Jesus Christ, can at least discern in some small way and can experience in some small way the glory of Jesus in our personal relationship with Christ and in our spiritual lives. And that is an important lesson for us that the glory of Jesus did not just take place in the, on the Mount of Transfiguration as a one-off event, but it was an introduction, a glimpse of what the glory of Jesus is and its significance available to all disciples and believers, disciples of Christ and believers in him. And therefore, I would like to ask you, can we just look back on our Christian lives? Can we just look back on our personal relationship with Christ? And can we just look back on the spiritual experiences that we have had over the years. I'm sure for many of us who have sought the Lord, who have grown close to the Lord, and who have waited upon the Lord, we would be able to recall one or two or perhaps even a few spiritual experiences that were so blessed, that were so inspiring, that even felt almost supernatural or miraculous. It is important for us to identify that and to acknowledge it. Because in doing so, we are opening our eyes and opening our hearts to experiencing the glory of Jesus at work in our lives and being revealed to us from time to time. Hence, we need to be spiritually sensitive to discern the glory of Christ that goes over and above human circumstances, that goes over and above our human efforts, and that holds us in awe and wonder that we are able to proclaim how marvelous, how wonderful is the glory of Christ as we stand in awe of him. Secondly, we need to know that the transfiguration of Jesus implies the process of spiritual transformation taking place in our lives. From as the prayer, as our opening, as our prayer for the day, states from glory to glory he is changing us this process of spiritual transformation is actually a participation in the glory of jesus because if we look at our natural selves and if we look at our past there were times that we probably were quite happy with ourselves the way we were. And there were times that we might have said, I don't want to be too close to God. I don't want to be too committed. I don't want to be too involved or participated because I want to feel comfortable, safe, and also able to continue my personal interests 
in life. And many of us have moved on through the years, through our relationship with Christ, through our spiritual experiences. Many of us have moved on from that position. And that is an indication of the process of spiritual transformation taking place in us, changing from glory to glory, becoming better people, having greater wisdom, learning to handle life and our circumstances better, and experiencing the vindication and the victory of Christ in difficult situations and this process continues and we need to cooperate with God and his Holy Spirit undertaking this process in us because the glory of Jesus is revealed in the process of spiritual transformation in our lives such that we are changing from glory to glory to manifest more and more the image of God that is imputed into us by God in creation and that is continued through the work of Christ and our acceptance of Christ in our lives. And that is developed through the work of the Holy Spirit upon us. The third aspect of the glory of Jesus in our lives is discerning, understanding, and knowing the reality of the Word of God in our lives, the power of the Word of God for our lives, and the glory of the Word of God, which points to the glory of Jesus. The disciples would have understood and recognized the role and the ministry of Moses and Elijah because most God-fearing Jews were familiar with the Old Testament. Likewise, we today need to be familiar with the Word of God, need to be understanding the Word of God, and need to be experiencing the reality and the power of the Word of God, because when the Word of God bears fruit in our lives, or comes to pass in our lives, it is a reflection and an indication of the glory of Christ in our lives and for our lives. Now let us look at this event from the experience of, and the, from the experience and uh, the uh, responses of the disciples towards Jesus. The transfiguration took place in the context of discipleship and spiritual discipline on the part of Peter, James and John because Peter, James, and John were the closest disciples or the inner group to Jesus or with Jesus. And when Jesus called them to follow him up to the mountain top to be by themselves, they obeyed and followed. And this is an indication of the context of faithful discipleship to Christ and a close and faithful relationship with Christ. Secondly, they spent time alone with Jesus on the mountaintop 
and that is quite obvious. They were away from the crowds and they were away from the daily lives and daily activities that they would have been engaged in. And there was nothing else to do up at the mountain top. When we think of a mountain top in those days, we cannot think of Cameron Highlands or Gunting Highlands where we can go and have a holiday. And some of us may, some people may even indulge in vices. We need to think of the mountain top as an isolated place with nothing to do. Spending time, perhaps a whole day, up on the mountain top. And this relates to spending time alone with Jesus or a spiritual retreat for us. There is this necessary condition of having time alone with Jesus and a private, personal, quiet retreat with Jesus. If we are seeking a special touch from the Lord and a glimpse of His glory. Thirdly, when Jesus went up the mountain, His primary focus was to pray. Although this is not indicated in verse 2 in today's passage where it just says up on the high mountain where they were alone but the account according to Luke chapter 9 and verses 28 to 36 adds these words they went up onto a high mountain to pray and so Jesus himself spent time in prayer and waiting upon the Lord up on the mountaintop. And let us remember that Jesus did the same before, before the, the glorious event of the transfiguration took place. And let us remember that Jesus did the same at the Garden of Gethsemane before his death and his glorious resurrection to spend time alone with God to pray and taking his three disciples or taking his other disciples all the disciples as in the case of the Garden of Gethsemane with him to pray but what was the response of the disciples they were sleepy they were probably half asleep as in the case of the garden of gethsemane such that when the transfiguration took place they quickly had to wake up and were quickly suddenly stunned by the sight of the glory of jesus the transfiguration of jesus that took place before their eyes If we want to experience the glory of Jesus and if we want to respond appropriately to the glory of Jesus, discerning it and discovering it for our lives, we need to spend time in prayer and waiting upon the Lord so that we can experience the most and the best of the work of Jesus and the glory of Jesus upon us especially in moments when we are seeking the Lord and in moments when we are seeking to draw close to the Lord and in moments when we are asking for a miracle or a breakthrough in our lives and that is the third appropriate condition and spiritual discipline that we must be involved in. And fourthly, as mentioned earlier, we must know 
the word of God so that we are able to discern the will of God, the work of God and the ways of God. We become wiser people, we become sharper in our perspectives, in our decisions and in our responses in whatever situation we face and in the demands of our daily lives when we know the word of God and the spiritual principles that God gives us through his word. Now we are entering into the Lent season. It's an ideal time, a, an exemplary time or a model period for us to undertake spiritual disciplines more intensely because discipleship and spiritual disciplines set the right environment and set the appropriate conditions for us to receive the greater work and the greater glory of Jesus for our lives. And we need to understand that God blesses his people and believers in Christ to experience the glory of Jesus in our lives. And this experience brings great joy, assurance, and direction to our lives. And that is why I ask you to look back on those special spiritual experiences that you have had. The special blessed moments that you have had as part of your relationship with God and the growth of your spiritual lives because those experiences would have brought great joy and assurance and direction for your lives and hence we need to recall and remember those experiences from time to time because they amount to the spiritual mountaintop experiences of our lives and these spiritual mountaintop experiences can be an anchor for our lives when we face the winds and storms of life or when we go down into the valleys and pits of life which sometimes happen due to the earthly conditions that we live in. Christian discipleship and spiritual disciplines will help lead us to discerning, discovering and experiencing the glory of Christ in our lives. And so let us be a people who are always rejoicing in the glory of Christ being revealed to us. Let us be a people who are always remembering and sharing about the special spiritual experiences of the Lord that we have had because as we do so we are receiving and affirming and opening up ourselves for more of the work of God in our lives through the Holy Spirit and for more experiences of the glory of Christ in our lives and let us learn to see that the glory of Christian discipleship and the glory of spiritual disciplines will lead us and will set 
the appropriate the, the right environment and the appropriate condition for us to experience more and more of the glory of Christ in our lives and therefore let us look forward to the season of Lent and the more intense intensive spiritual disciplines that we undertake with joy with anticipation with an openness to discern and discover more and more of the glory of Christ for our lives let us pray Lord God Almighty we give you thanks and praise for the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountaintop and we give you thanks and praise for your love and faithfulness to us such that you minister to us mountaintop spiritual experiences from time to time in our relationship with you through your son Jesus Christ and in the work of your Holy Spirit upon our lives let us celebrate rejoice and share and even affirm our the glorious experiences that we have of you in our lives of your word coming to pass for our lives of your power at work in our lives and of the greater glory that we can see despite the limited and challenging earthly circumstances that we might grow through in jesus name we pray amen
Please turn to your church bulletin, the white colored one. Page 4. We say the prayer of dedication together. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers of his table reflect his life in word and deed that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please turn now to the blue colored order of service. Page 4, item 21. Let's say the prayer of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please rise to sing our thanksgiving song. Glorious things of thee are spoken. You may refer to the lyrics on the overhead screen. Thank you. 